there and welcome to the December edition of Let's Talk Astronomy. To catch the spirit of the festive season, the time of gifts and giving and receiving, today we're going to look at telescopes. Telescopes that you might want to buy to get into observational astronomy and find out something about the mysteries of the universe. But first, we're going to look at a mystery which has intrigued generations of astronomers. What was the Christmas star? What was the star of Bethlehem that inspired the three wise men to go and find Jesus? Let's have a look at three of the ideas that have come up over the years. First, we need to know when Jesus was born, and it wasn't year zero. Most scholars reckon that Jesus was born between 4 BC and 6 BC. So what kind of astronomical events were happening about that time? Well, one popular idea is that the star of Bethlehem was really a comet. In the year 1305, Giotto painted this picture, the Adoration of the Magi. In 1301, he'd seen Halley's Comet in the sky. So he represented the star of Bethlehem as a comet. Unfortunately for us, there was no bright comet seen around the time that Jesus was born. Just a suggestion of a comet in 5 BC, but nothing really that we can pin down to. So not a comet, unfortunately. Here's another popular idea. The star of Bethlehem was a supernova, an exploding star. Here, a star would apparently arrive out of nothing and shine brightly for a month or so. A great candidate, but sadly, no supernova was seen about the time Jesus was born. Uh, but look at this. This is something that could possibly explain that mystical star. We're now in 7 BC. In May, the two planets, Jupiter and Saturn, came close together in the sky, just an accidental lineup. It happened again. It happened again in October. The two planets in their orbits came together for a second time. And it happened again in December of the same year. This is an event that the Magi would have regarded as significant. Three times the two planets came together. That could have heralded the birth of the Messiah. Well, it's just an idea, and we've got to admit that really there's no definitive answer to what the star of Bethlehem was. It remains a mystery, and probably, that's probably the best way. However, this Christmas, we do have a Christmas star. It isn't a star at all, it's the planet Jupiter, and it's in the same kind of place as it was at the time Jesus was born. So no miracle star for Christmas this year, but do enjoy looking at the planet Jupiter. And to see the planet, you might want to get a telescope. Maybe next year, you're going to be observing the night sky. To get some advice in buying telescopes, we're now going to visit Rother Valley Optics and talk to Ian Littlewood. He's just the man to give us advice about buying that first telescope to look up at the night sky. Oh, so here we are with uh, Ian Littlewood of Rother Valley Optics and Ian's jangly got a, a wonderful array of telescopes out for us. Uh, Ian, are these all entry-level telescopes? They are mainly, yes. Uh, we class these as, as the beginner to sort of uh, a bit more advanced toward, as we get towards the end of the, the line of telescopes. So we're starting from the basic beginner level and we're going up to like a, a mid-range sort of level at the very end. So, so this is a telescope for the younger astronomer? It is, basically, yes, because of the up and down, easy movement, yeah. left and right, up and down, then yes, it is. Uh, they haven't got to learn how to use the equatorial mount, which can be quite difficult if you're of a young age. Yeah, so it's quite straightforward. So. Uh, Let's move on to this slightly more complicated looking one, then, Ian. Right. Again, it's an azimuth type mount telescope. So it's left and right again and up and down, but it's just a bit more, you know, better built. Yeah. So basically, it'll take more weight. Yeah. Uh, a bit more high precision than the other one. Uh, but it, uh, it does the same thing in theory, but just a little bit better. So yeah, when we come to cost, Ian, uh, roughly the price of that one? So this one here uh, is about £60. And this one? And this one's about £100. Yeah. Right. And like I said, the refractors are, uh, are good scopes for lunar work yeah. at this level. So you've got lunar work and you've got the planetary work. 
uh, and bright deep sky work as well. So those are the sort of showpiece objects you yes. will be interested in? Yes, I mean, you know, the, the deep sky ones, the very faint ones, are going to be difficult to see in an afternoon sure. of that size. Yeah, because we've only got a small uh, we've only light got the, collection. The, the uh, small light collection, right, so yeah. the, big, the bigger the better. But as an entry level, you're going to see the moon very well, all the craters. Yeah. And uh, obviously the planetary, you're going to see yeah. the bands on Jupiter, little uh, moons on either side of Jupiter. And bright nebula like Orion M13, quite yeah. a few of the messiers. All, it just it, it all depends on the sky conditions. So if you're in a very very good sky, uh, no light pollution, yeah, you're going to see you know quite a lot. Yeah. Right here we've got a Newtonian type uh, telescope. So the light comes in down the telescope. It's the primary mirror at the back. Comes back up and it's a secondary mirror and then out to your eye where the eyepiece goes here. Yeah. So the eyepiece drops into here and that's what we call the focuser. Yeah. So you focus it in and out. Uh, until you achieve focus with that given eyepiece. And this type of telescope, we've been a reflector type, uh, you tend to get a lot of uh, mirror for your money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because obviously, you know, the bigger the better, uh, and that's what you usually get with Newtonian type telescopes. Uh, disadvantages and advantages uh, through a refractor to one of these is that you've got two mirrors in this system. Yeah. So uh, you have to make sure that they're kept uh, optically aligned. Yeah so that uh, you get a quality of image off it. Uh, so uh, an advantage to this one as well is uh, obviously you get a, a lot more faint objects coming into view on it with it having that bigger mirror. I, I always say telescopes are like having big eyes. Mm. So the bigger the mirror, the bigger the lens, the bigger right. the eye you're, you're looking right. through. And the mount that it's on, we're now on an equatorial mount. Yeah. So we've got, uh, we've got these dials here, uh, which represent time. And this dial here, which represents uh, degrees up and down, the actual altitude uh, of, 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 the, of the mount. So this has to be set up to the north. Yeah. It's quite complicated to start with if you're a beginner. Uh, but they have to be set to the north, uh, to the latitude of where you're locating from. Yeah. And then obviously you can then learn more about the, uh, the, the setting circles on and how the sky is all mapped out. Because the sky is, a, is an imaginary grid all mapped out. Yeah. Each object has its own coordinate. Yeah. All right. So you set those to the yeah. coordinates. That's right. That's right. Something. We do a DVD on that that uh, explains all about the yeah. editorial. So let's move on to this rather yep. longer-looking telescope, and uh, to many people who are starting in astronomy, yep. uh, that oh yeah, they'll say yeah, that's the sort of telescope I, I would expect. Yeah. It, it, again, it's a refractor, the same as these. Yeah. So it is a refractor again, but it's longer. Why yeah. is it longer? Because it corrects the light better. Uh -huh. So the longer the focal length on a telescope the better the light is corrected. Sure. So you get less chromatic aberration. Yeah. Now, chromatic aberration is when you look, through, look at a bright object with an achromatic lens, is that, and that's what's in these. Yeah. You'll tend to get a purple halo around the bright uh -huh. objects. Okay? Yeah. But if it's a longer one, achromatic, then it's better corrected and you won't get a severe chromatic aberration. Yeah. So that's something to look for when you're actually thinking of buying a telescope, yeah. is to see that yeah. it doesn't have that chromatic it, aberration or it's cut down as much yeah. as you can. Uh, it's not going to affect the viewing of the actual object uh, in, in the actual centre. It's only the perimeter of yeah. the object that you may get this purple yeah. but that's in all achromatic telescopes, unless yeah. you buy an ED telescope. Uh, telescopes, which are far more expensive, yeah, yeah, uh, and we, t we, get, we then get into a professional level with the the uh, lens inside them. And now we've got a smaller looking reflector there, yeah, uh, but a much more complex looking mount. Right, yeah. Again, it's an equatorial. They all work uh, in the same theory. Uh, equatorials. Yeah. So all, they've, they've all, you've got to set the latitude on it. You've got to get a reference point to the setting circles. So it's an equatorial. Yeah. So they all work, and they're just different sizes. Yeah. All yeah. right, so it looks a bit bigger to that because it's more sturdy because it has to be because there's a lot more weight on it. Sure. Okay. It's a larger aperture, this. It's a five, uh, five and a half inch uh, Newtonian again. Yeah. Same as the four, four inch here, but it's, it's much bigger. So more light collecting More power. light coming in. And, yeah. uh, so, so you're getting a lot more, lot more for your money on that with the light gathering. That's around about £160. Yeah. Back to that one, about £140. And it's a very reasonable price yeah. uh, for what you're getting there. And that one's about under 25 Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're on to this um, refractor, and this one obviously, again, it's the, the same design, it's slightly larger, it's a 90 millimeter, mm. a little bit shorter. Um, the light's very well corrected in this one because it's a, a slightly better achromatic glass. So you've got a little bit better corrected light, and it gives you a, a wider field. So I guess that's a little bit more money than the other one. Yeah, uh, that's around about 160 pounds. Right, still, yeah. still very reasonable. It is very reasonable. We've got slow motion controls here because yeah. uh, that helps you to find objects better. Yeah. 
Uh, moving along, we've got the four-inch chassis here, which is a very popular telescope because uh -huh. it's compact. People don't want big telescopes yeah. nowadays. They want, yeah. a, they want compact telescopes. This is a full go-to telescope. So once you've told it where it is, i.e. time and date, location, sure. you've got an object database here, you can send it to any object within that database and it'll put it in the centre of the eyepiece. Amazing piece of kit. Yeah. Uh, 395. Again, for the technology. Yep. That, that's quite Excellent. remarkable, isn't yeah. it? The, the only thing, you, you're paying for the technology there, but of course you've got a smaller telescope than some that's of the right. other ones we've seen. That's right. Yeah. It's, a, it's a max souped off, uh, 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 so the fit, in theory you've got a longer focal length on yeah. this. So we've because, got a compact Yeah, the light's going up and there. down, up and down it, so it's a very long focal length, so the light's corrected. There's very little chromatic aberration in, in it, if any. Yeah. So that's an advantage. Yeah. Designed for lunar and planetary work initially, that's what that's what its main design was for. Yeah. Uh, but obviously for deep sky, uh, bright deep sky work, it's good for that as yeah. well. And compact, very portable, yeah. on holiday, no problem. And for the deep sky, you've got the database got to the find database, things got all for the wall <laughs> objects, the Messier, the NGCs, the planet, you've yeah. got it all there, star info. And if, and if you get stuck to see what, what uh, you know, you don't, you're not too sure what to see, you press the tour button and it'll bring the objects for you to view that night. Yeah. Back onto a little more short refractory again, but I'm just going to explain now about the ED, because the ED, extra dispersion glass, yeah. is a very high quality glass. Uh -huh. So you're going to get zero chromatic aberration on it. Uh, it's going to give you a, a really refined image. Yeah. But you're talking about 480 pounds. Again, you're paying this time for the lens. Yeah, yeah. for the lens and obviously for the focuser because you've got a very yeah. focus focuser yeah. on there. It's a very high quality instrument. Get it to professional, sort of like amateur professional level there yeah. with that one, but excellent for imaging and visual use. Yeah, lovely uh, little telescope. Yeah, yeah. And now the big boy. Yeah, we've got this 8-inch uh, Newtonian. Again, it's on an equatorial mount, just bigger. Yeah. Because it has to be because <laughs> of, the, of the size of the scope, a lot more weight there. So bigger aperture, eight inch coming in on this. So you've got a lot of light being collected. Yeah. So you can see the deep sky objects uh, clearly, M13, Andromeda. You know, it all starts to come in because of the light. And obviously it handles the magnification better. So you, sure. you get around about 250 power out of this one. Yeah. Yeah. And the cost of that one here? No, no, 395. 395? Complete. Quite remarkable, isn't yeah. it, really, yeah. what you get for your money these days? It is, it is. It's unbelievable, really. But it, yeah, what a telescope. Use one many times and you get some really nice views yeah. of it. That's it. So you've got a very yeah. small portable one there yeah. uh, and, and some of the others we've seen. And yeah. then we've got the big boy for you. That's for right. Going. What I say to people is, uh, you know, when you're buying a telescope, you need good advice. Yeah. Call us. Explain what you're going to be using it for. Yeah. Explain, you know, how much you want to spend, you know, it, it, and we'll we'll work around that and, and, and see which is the best telescope for you. Well, I think we've, well, thank you, Ian. <laughs> we've seen a wonderful array of telescopes here. And I think what comes out of this is what Ian said uh, finally, and that is that if you're going to buy a telescope, you can buy a telescope from what we've said, 100, 150 pound upwards, you know, to around about 400 pounds. But before you buy, you must take advice from somebody who really knows about telescopes. Please visit a telescope shop. Please visit and talk to someone like Ian. He'll be able to match the telescope, not only to your budget, but the sort of things you're going to look for and the sort of light environment that you're in. So thanks again, Ian. Right, thanks very much for showing us this wonderful array of telescopes. You're welcome, thank you. So thank you, Ian. I hope that's helped everybody who's thinking of buying a telescope. Don't forget that our gallery will be on screen at the end of the show. All it remains for me to do is from everybody at Let's Talk Astronomy to wish you a happy solstice and a merry perihelion. And of course, over the festive season, I wish you clear skies. Goodbye for now.